Went up. In my job, I meet people on the worst day of their life. I'm an intensivist, a physician who specializes in intensive care medicine. If you become my patient, it's because you need life-sustaining therapies in the ICU. Lately, I've been rethinking how I care for people. Let me tell you why. On February 27, 2007, on a snowy stretch of highway outside of Uppsala, Sweden, two buses collided head on. This is what was left of one of the buses. Six people died, but miraculously, 56 people were saved. Five years later, researchers asked the question, what do survivors remember? They interviewed every survivor, and using a rigorous qualitative research methodology, they found two common themes in the data. The first was expected, the physical pain that they felt at the moment of impact. But the other theme, a lack of compassion from the caregivers at all the hospitals. That's what they remembered five years later. These data have begun to open my eyes to a stark reality. In healthcare, we are in the midst of a compassion crisis. Scientists define compassion as an emotional response to another's pain or suffering involving an authentic desire to help. It's different from sympathy or empathy, which are the feeling and understanding components, and that compassion also involves taking action. So here are the data. Research from Harvard University found that nearly 50% of Americans believe that our healthcare system and our providers are not compassionate. Two thirds of patients have had a meaningful healthcare experience with a lack of compassion. Rigorous research show that 70% of opportunities for compassion are missed by physicians, and compassion comprises less than 1% of all communications by physicians to patients. These data are compounded by an epidemic of burnout in healthcare providers. Burnout is characterized by depersonalization, which is an inability to make a personal connection. And in the era of electronic medical records, rigorous research shows that healthcare providers spend more time looking into computer screens than looking patients in the eyes. Based on all of these data, I conclude we have a compassion crisis indeed. But here's the big question. Does it matter? Does compassion really matter? Now, you may say, of course, compassion matters. We have a moral imperative. It's part of the art of medicine. And of course, I agree. But is compassion just in the art of medicine? Or are there also evidence-based effects belonging in the science of medicine? And what is the evidence? In addition to being an intensivist, I'm also a physician scientist. In other words, I'm a research nerd. I like data. And my hypothesis was that compassion matters for patients, for patient care, and for those who care for patients. So I went to the biomedical literature, and I used a methodology called systematic review. So over two years through the National Library of Medicine, I reviewed more than 1,000 scientific abstracts, more than 200 research studies in total. And today I share with you what I found. The effects of compassion on patients, on patient care, and specifically the cost of care, and on those who care for patients, our healthcare providers. There are more than 20 distinct mechanisms of action by which compassion can have beneficial effects on patients. Let's go to the data. Let's start with the practical. If you have compassion for patients, you may be more likely to be meticulous about their care or have higher quality standards and lower likelihood of making a major medical error. But there are also physiological effects. Compassion can buffer stress-mediated disease. Compassion can also modulate a patient's experience of pain. 
There are neuroendocrine effects. So in patients with diabetes, research shows that high physician compassion is associated with an 80% higher odds of optimal blood sugar control and 40% lower odds of acute metabolic complications. There are also immune system effects. So in a University of Wisconsin study, in patients with a common cold, high physician compassion, as rated by patients, was associated with enhanced immune response, shorter duration of symptoms, and lower severity of symptoms. And importantly, compassion can, imp can impact patient self-care. If you care deeply about patients, and they know that, they may be more likely to take their medicine. In a Johns Hopkins study of 1,700 patients with HIV, researchers asked patients, does your physician know you as a person? Knowing the patient as a person was associated with 33% higher odds of adherence to therapy and 20% higher odds of having no detectable virus in the blood. Compassion has also been associated with lower healthcare costs, which are a major factor in the health of our economy. In primary care, for example, research from the University of Rochester and UC Davis have shown that compassionate, patient-centered care is associated with lower discretionary resource utilization. So fewer diagnostic tests, fewer referrals to specialists, fewer unnecessary hospitalizations, and lower total health care charges. So here's the bottom line. If healthcare providers actually spend more time talking to patients, maybe we don't need so many tests and referrals. But what about time? We've all heard the expression, time is money, but time is also a vital factor in the efficiency and the economics of healthcare. So here's a staggering number, 56. Research from Harvard University shows that 56% of physicians believe they do not have time for compassion. This is in the context of a classic study from Princeton University on helping behaviors, which found that it wasn't the intrinsic belief of the importance of helping by the potential helper. It was whether or not the potential helper believed they had enough time to help. So how long does it actually take for a meaningful expression of compassion? To address this, researchers from Johns Hopkins University did a randomized control trial in patients with cancer who were having a consultation with the oncologist. And in this randomized trial, the primary outcome measure was anxiety. And if you have cancer, that's a pretty important outcome measure. So they found that patients randomized to a compassion intervention from the oncologist had less anxiety than usual care. So what was the compassion intervention? I could describe it for you, but instead I'm just going to read it to you. From the oncologist at the beginning of the consultation, I know this is a tough experience to go through. And I want you to know that I am here with you. Some of the things that I say to you today may be difficult to understand, so I want you to feel comfortable in stopping me if something I say is confusing or doesn't make sense. We are here together, and we will go through this together. And at the end of the consultation, the oncologist said, I know this is a tough time for you, and I want to emphasize again that we are in this together. I will be with you each step along the way. So how long did that take? They timed it, 40 seconds. So this randomized trial shows that all you need is 40 seconds of compassion to make a meaningful difference. Importantly, 40 seconds of compassion can be a powerful therapy for the giver, too. And this is important because these data are not just applicable to healthcare workers, but to everyone here today. Science shows that compassion for others can have a direct positive effect on your own well being. Neuroscience studies show that compassion for others can trigger reward pathways in the brain and positive emotion 
that can buffer or even counteract the activation of stress pathways and negative emotion. So, in effect, compassion for others can make you forget your own worries, at least temporarily. So now this is where the science meets the personal. A couple of years ago, after nearly 20 years of working in the ICU and meeting people on the worst day of their life, I came to a stark realization. I had almost every symptom of burnout. And let me assure you, that's not a good place to be. It can be a dark place. Currently, the recommended prescription for burnout is what I call escapism. Get away. Detach. Pull back. Go on some nature hikes or whatever. But I was not buying it because I believed, I believed that the antidote to burnout had to be at the point of care. In personal connection, human connection, not in escape. So what was I supposed to do? Well, I did the only thing I knew how to do. I took the research nerd approach. And armed with the data that 40 seconds of compassion can be a powerful therapy for the giver too, I decided to do an experiment on myself. I was the only research subject in this experiment. <laughs> I was the N of one. So I tested the hypothesis that my 40 seconds of compassion would transform my experience. I connected more, not less. Cared more, not less. Leaned in rather than pulling back. And that was when the fog of burnout began to lift. My 40 seconds of compassion changed everything for me. Now, you might be thinking, I'm speaking on the power of compassion. I must be the most compassionate doctor. But, but the truth, if I'm being honest, is that I'm still a work in progress. I'm working hard at compassion every day, but I see it now. And thankfully, science shows that change can happen. I used to think that people were either wired for compassion or they were not. But the preponderance of evidence in the scientific literature, both in healthcare workers and in the general population, shows quite clearly that compassionate behaviors can, in fact, be learned. And that is good news indeed. So now it's time to answer the big question that I posed to you at the beginning. Does compassion matter? My systematic review of the literature now complete 1,000 scientific abstracts, 200 research manuscripts, and one life-changing N of one experiment behind me. I now conclude with confidence, compassion matters for patients, for patient care, and for those who care for patients. Compassionate care belongs in the domain of evidence-based medicine. I no longer believe in this paradigm behind me, this historical paradigm. I now believe in this one. Because I found that there is science in the art of medicine. And the science is strong. I like to call this field compassionomics. It's the convergence of the science and the art of medicine. I will close just by acknowledging that you don't have to be a healthcare worker to feel burned out. And if you do, I suggest that you test the compassion hypothesis for yourself. Do your N of one experiment. Look and see those around you in need of compassion and give them your 40 seconds of compassion. See how it transforms your experience. But don't do it because I say so. Do it because science says so. 40 seconds of compassion can change everything for a patient. It changed everything for me. 
it can change everything for you too. And that is the power of 40 seconds. Thank you.